Glory, 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 and glory. I love to be reconnected. I hate to be disconnected. Too many are disconnected. The world is disconnected. But God is awakening and bringing revival and giving opportunity for reconnect. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We know that we do not fight flesh and blood, but powers of darkness and wickedness in heavenly places. Amen. And every lifeless demonic spirit that's looking for a life source called a human. Amen. In Galatians chapter 6. Word tells us in the last days that there be imposters, that wickedness and evilness would increase, that there be a falling away, that many would be taken out by doctrines of demons and seducive and sed deceiving spirits. They would come to a place where they have itchy ears because they're looking for places to be fed by the things that comfort their soul instead of change their soul. Amen. Amen. In verse 7, Galatians 6, 7, let's speak it together. Do not be what? Deceived. deceived. God is not mocked. Let's speak that again. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, he knows it all. What many people think they're getting away with, God knows. And if you're trying to get away with something, you are actually mocking him. Amen? For whatever man sows that he's going to reap, nobody escapes. For he who sows to the flesh will reap, will of the flesh reap corruption. Corruption is associated with a curse. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So he says to us, look, don't grow weary while doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. That's where the enemy tries to come in and bring a disconnect, where an individual begins to lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. Again, God is not mocked. He knows it all. He knows the motive, the attitude. He knows our desires, and he also knows our intentions. He knows it all. And we'll be judged on every bit of it. In Proverbs 23. Nobody escapes. It's all recorded. That's why we must be quick to turn and repent. And not justify. Proverbs 23. Starting at verse 1. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. Deceptive food. Hmm. Deceptive food is from the devil. It's like deviled eggs. <laughs> it promotes ungodliness. Amen? We don't eat deviled eggs anymore. We eat blessed eggs. <laughs> Verse 4. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. And do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. 
For as he thinks in his heart, say it again, as he thinks in his heart, it's not just as he thinks, it's as he thinks in his heart, because the heart is the core of your spirit. As he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Powerful. So you see again, deceptive food is from the devil. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Your heart, again, hmm, is either with you or against you. It is the core of the human spirit. The heart conceives and the mind reflects. The heart conceives and the mind reflects and the mouth releases. Again, the heart conceives, the mind reflects what has been eaten. It sees it. And then the mouth releases it. Matthew 15. We'll get to the title here in a second. In case you're wondering. <laughs> My wife cheated. Or she'd be asking me what the title is. <laughs> In verse 7, hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, these people do what? Draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In other words, they come in praise and worship, but they honor him with his mouth, but really not his heart, their heart. There's a difference. And in vain they worship me, he says, teaching us doctrines, the commandments of men. When he had called a multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and understand. Hear and understand. What goes into the mouth does not defile, what, wait a minute, not what goes into the mouth, defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard the same? But Jesus answered and said, every plant which, is my, which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. And Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. Remember, the heart conceives, the mind reflects, the mouth releases. For out of the heart proceed what? Evil thoughts, murders, adulteresses, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemy. And these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Out of the mouth comes from the heart. The heart conceives, the mind reflects, the mouth releases. Revelation 12. In verse 7, is everybody okay? Yeah. Revelation 12, 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. 
and the dragon and his angels fought. Hmm. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So he deceives the whole world. Is he still deceiving the whole world? Yes. You know, we know that he's the father of lies. Amen. But there's something else where God exposes him specifically. And this is the battle we are battling right now. Verse 10. He said, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now the salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the what? Accuser. Accuser is a representation of a critical spirit. The accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that his has a short time. Again, the accuser falsely accuses as the father of lies who came to steal, kill, and destroy with his left, uh, lifeless demons that um, they need a human body to operate. These accusing spirits or critical spirits influence from the, are influenced Individuals from the dark side using critical spirits through media, education, music, Facebook, Twitter, Internet, books, rich and famous people, talk shows, radio stations, news, all kinds of stuff. Anything that can be communicated, these critical spirits are invaded and have invaded, and that's what you're seeing everywhere. They're critical spirits. Spirits accusing individuals, lying, cheating. Hmm. Hallelujah. These spirits enforce a negative attitude. They seek to condemn, tear down. And destroy with their words. Again, they, these spirits enforce a negative attitude. They seek to condemn, tear down, and destroy with words. It creates blind spots in, person, in a person's heart and mind. Causing them to believe that they're being constructive. I'll say it again. It creates blind spots in a person's heart and mind, causing their, them to believe that they are being constructive. But they're really not. They're being destructive. This negative disposition looks for faults in something or someone to build up their own self. so that they look good and better than others, while they themselves are captives of these evil spirits in the dark side. Critical spirits you are seeing everywhere. It's influencing the body of Christ. It's influencing the political, right now, big time in a government, all over. It is destroying, because there is life and death in the power of the tongue. And Matthew 7.
critical spirits. In verse 1, let's speak it. Is everybody okay there? Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged yourself. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the national grand forest in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eyes, and look, a plank is in your own eye, hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. <laughs> judgment brings judgment. Unless there is true constructive criticism used to build up and to warn. Many individuals that are carrying these critical spirits are racist. They claim racism. They're angry. They're prideful. And they can become violent. Because there really is no restraints. If you do not agree with... if. Um, you do, don't agree with them, you are their enemy. Because they have their own emotional view and they can't see things all the way through. And they get fed from other influenced individuals that have been taken by critical spirits also. So they feed one another. Have you ever heard of what... Uh, Miserable company draws miserable company or whatever it is. Yeah, misery loves company and you know, whatever. Hallelujah. We are seeing this all over. We must be very careful that we don't touch it. It will contaminate us very quickly. Second Peter chapter 2. So before you start talking about somebody else, you better start remembering where you came from. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 12. But these, like brute beasts, made to be caught, and destroyed speak evil things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls, that they have a heart trained in covetous practices and are what? Accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Baal or false deities and religions and doctrines of demons, son of Baal, who love the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds carried by the tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in the air, 
In other words, they are speaking lies and people are eating it up. While they promise them freedom, liberty, free college, free education, and free health care, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. In other words, if they are entangled again and overcome, amen, for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But as... But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a soul, ha a, ha having washed to her swallowing in mire. Again, these are heart-trained individuals in covetousness, covetous practices from doctrines of demons, promoting great swelling promises, but are slaves of corruption, unrighteousness, and they promote and they vote for abortion, sexual perversion, fed by false news, and are accursed children. We are seeing this happen before our eyes in Romans chapter 1. Romans 1, 28. Critical spirits. They criticize everything. In verse 28, let's speak it. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to the base mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of the evil things, disobedient to appearance, undiscerning, Oh, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death and not only do the same but also approve of those who practice such things. That's phenomenal. These self-righteous, compromising, critical hosts of wickedness reject the righteousness of God. They reject a pure heart. They reject the promises of God. They cooperate and they, they reject the cooperation. They're grumblers and complainers, especially in, even when tithing comes. They're critical. They refuse to submit in all areas and they refuse to assemble because they carry a critical spirit. They're always putting their own self-agenda first. This is called self-factor. We have self-factor, then we have fear-factor. <laughs> These individuals with the fear-factor associated with a critical spirit, they, their, their fear-factor feeling threatened by someone Insecurity, they feel threatened by individuals that may do better than them. Then there's a control factor. They feel out of control. So they use manipulation or shame to gain control again. Do I need to go over this again? <laughs> okay. 
These self-righteous, compromising, critical hosts of wickedness reject the righteousness of God and the purity of heart. They refuse to cooperate with the tithing principles, submission, and assemble. They're always putting their self-agenda first. This is called self-factor. Fear factor is feeling threatened by someone or something with, because of insecurity and the, and the fear that somebody will do better than them. Then there's control factor. Feeling out of control, so they use manipulation or shame to gain control. They like to remind you of what you've done, even though that's done and over with. That is a critical spirit. They like to remind everybody else what they've done, but they don't want to know, they don't want to go back to what they've done. Proverbs 11. A critical spirit will have a hard time to forgive, even though they say they forgive. They will hold grudges. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11 and verse 12. Let's speak it together. He who is devout of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his peace. A tale bearer or a gossiper reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in a multitude of counsel, there is safety. Proverbs 20. A talebearer is a gossiper. Proverbs 20 and verse 13. Do not what? Love sleep. Hmm. Lest you come to what? Poverty. Open your eyes and you will be satisfied with bread. It is good for nothing, cries the buyer, but when he has gone his way, then he boasts. There is gold in a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Whoa. <laughs> Praise God. Take a garment of one who is shrewdy for a stranger and hold it as a pledge when it is for a seductress. Bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth will be filled with gravel. Plans are established by counsel, but wise counsel wage war. He who goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with one who flatters with his or her lips. Oh, happy days. Slanderers, flatterers, gossipers. In Proverbs 10. Oh, glory. Proverbs 10. In verse 16. The laborer of the righteous leads to what? Life. The wages of the wicked to sin. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life, 
but he who refuses construction goes astray. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. In a multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Wow. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sour to it. Praise God. Mm, go to 23. To do evil is like sport to a fool, but a man of understanding has wisdom. The fear of the wicked will come upon him, and the desire of the righteous will be granted. When the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. Slanders makes false statements in order to damage an individual's reputation. Slanders make false statements in order to da damage an individual's reputation. Again, it's a part of a critical spirit. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2 verse 12. Let's speak it. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. <clears throat> do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God. Without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast a word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Powerful. Grumbling, complaining is all associated with a critical spirit. These individuals are characterized by discontentment and ungratefulness discontentment, and ungratefulness. Ephesians 4. Again, they are characterized by discontentment and ungratefulness, grumbling and complaining. That's a presence of a critical spirit. In Ephesians chapter 4, Hallelujah. It is not bipolar. It is a critical spirit. <laughs> bipolar. That's just two more demons. Hallelujah. Verse 25. Ephesians 4.25. <clears throat> Therefore, putting away what? Lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. And let no what? Corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification? That it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. 
And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. I want you to know that jealousy is also sort of associated with a critical spirit. We must overcome by, rec first thing is recognizing. Amen? Recognizing. Once you recognize it, you repent and you remove it. Amen? Now, it may have its claws or whatever and seeds of many parts of you. We are of many members in our body. So that it may be involved. You may have a critical spirit towards multiple people or multiple things or even events. You might have repented for one and removed it, but there's still multiple others. Romans 14. Again, this is the st large stronghold right now. It's, it's ginormous of the effect of it all over. Romans 14, 14. The speak it I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which are make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. And do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for a man who eats with offense. How many of y'all know that a, the fruit of a critical spirit is offense? It is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine nor to do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourselves before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves, but he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. And whatever is not of faith is sin. Offense is a fruit of a critical spirit. You ever been around someone who gets easily offended? Outbursts of anger? They can't stand correction because they have a critical spirit. Let me share with you also, a critical spirit is also, there's another spirit that hangs with it. It's called self-condemning. It's a self-condemning spirit also because it's, Critical of itself. In First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. In verse 8. Again, the first part of overcoming is recognizing. Amen? Finally, all of you be of one mind, having what? Compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tenderhearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, 
that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who want do evil. Hmm. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you, what? Suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it, will, if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins that the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit to whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, whom formerly were disobedient when once divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. So we overcome by the divine nature. We overcome by a recognizing and we overcome by the divine nature. Again, by recognizing you repent, so you're speaking the blood. You're activating the blood. And then you're commanding these spirits to move. Amen? So you recognize, you repent, and remove him. Why? Because you're always trying to get into that place of being restored, being refreshed. What? In character's image, in, in Christ's character, in image, and likeness. We battle with that all the time. In Ephesians 4. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 17. <clears throat> Everybody there? And speak it. This I say, therefore, and testify in testifying, O Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, and because of the blindness of their hearts. Now, how could their hearts become blinded? From a critical spirit. Remember, it causes blind spots. And what, how did they pick that up? Through something they've listened to and agreed. Something they've watched, whatever it is. Again, this is where all the media and, and all music and all kinds of stuff, not, you know, not every single station. I mean, the things of Christ are supposed to be promoting, uplifting, connecting us to God's presence. But these critical spirits reconnect individuals to the presence of evil. They disconnect individuals, nullify good works. You know, we're to labor on to the Lord. They now labor on to themselves. It's a matter of how much money they make, how many hours they work, this, 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 everything about self. It's not laboring on to the Lord. Is everybody okay? Verse 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. In other words, you've not learned his character. You've not exchanged your character for his. See, when you learn, there's an exchange being made. But see, the devil likes to come and steal what you've learned. Then what happens, it's replaced. So we're always bailing because we want to always maintain a place of refreshing Reconnecting. Amen. 
So we want to recognize, repent, and remove. But you've not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, put off concerning your former conduct, former agreements, former attitude, former words. The old man which grows corrupt. Why? Because the old man is cursed. It can never come out of the curse, which is your flesh. According to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your what? Your mind, that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Wow. If not learn Christ's character. The word says that, you know, they're always learning, 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 but never come to the knowledge of the truth. See, because people can learn a lot of truth, but never put it into practice. Amen? They can tell everybody else about the truth, but yet they can't walk it themselves. That's a critical and hypocritical spirit. I'm going to close at Psalm 1. It will rec you will begin to recognize it more because of the impartation from tonight. You'll be able to recognize it more in yourself or when it's being influenced to you and others so that you don't associate with it. Don't argue with a critical spirit. You know? Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who what? Walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Sounds like a critical spirit to me. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. And whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Now look at this is where a person is always walking in joy. Critical spirit brings torment. It brings oppression. In verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. One of the things in this is a critical spirit will drain you. You become dry. Even when you try to worship, it's difficult. In other words, you worship with lips, but not heart. That's where that critical spirit is. It comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Not only you, but it will use you to kill and destroy others with words. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We repent for any association with critical spirits. We ask that you search us through, Lord, wherever you find those spirits and attached to us, involved in us, or even taking hold of any of our members, Lord. We ask that you expose them and remove them. As we are, repent, acknowledge that they might be there, but we ask, Father, that you search us through tonight, remove them, and replace them with your spirit, that we may be filled, like-minded, and refreshed in the spirit in Christ Jesus. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise be to God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.